All right, all right, welcome back. And hopefully you've got your racetrack completed. I, I kind of went a little bit too hard on my racetrack. I got it completed. Um, but the first thing I wanted to show you is that, look, how I'm cycling around, if your world is really big, then you're not gonna wanna scroll through every part of it. You're gonna wanna cycle through it just like I did. And the way you do that is if you find an area that you like, like say I like this little lake area over here. Well, you just press control and a number. So for me, I've already got one, two, three, four. And let's do control five. And so now when I snap to, when I press the number one, it goes to my one space. When I press the number five, it'll snap back to number five. So that's a real cool trick that I wanted to share with you before we jump in and get started with the rest of this racing game. Because that will help you if you have a big track like I do. My track is gigantic and I don't know, I think I got carried away. But anyways, <clears throat> Uh, the first thing that we need to do is add some barrier devices so that the players can get outside of your track. So if you have any areas where the player can actually get outside of your track, like this area for me, uh, when they go over this jump, um, what you would need to do is put some barrier devices. And you can find them right here. If you come in here and type in, in your Fortnite folder, just type in barrier. And you'll see the barrier device right here is the first one. Um, the options for your barrier device, once you have them in your level, uh, basically you want to make them transparent, but um, one thing that you have to change is enabled on phase. Make sure any barrier device that you have in your level is always enabled. So change it to always. I think by default it's going to be on gameplay only. Just change it to always. And then you should be good with that. <clears throat> so the next thing that we need is two player spawn pads so for me i know i know um that i accidentally left these player spawn pads here so i'm gonna take them out so let's take these out and add our own in there so we can set it all right so these player spawn pads they have to be out of the way because it doesn't matter where they're going to be so let's just add in one at a time and we'll set the options and we'll just make the second one So there it goes, player spawn. And we'll put it right here, out of the way, off the track. It doesn't matter if it's on the track or not, it doesn't matter. But what does matter is that we need to come over here into the options for it, and we need to set these. So, for this one, we only have two teams because it's a race car game, so team one versus team two. So this one we're gonna set to team one, and we're gonna use island start, true, visible in game, false. And that's pretty much all you have to do for that. We can actually duplicate it by holding Alt and dragging it. And now you got the second one, but the difference here on the second one, we need to put this one on Team 2. So make sure you change the index here to Team 2. And you'll know that it's changed when the dude turns another color. So that's how you got that start. Uh, that's good right there. Now we need to set up where the cars actually start. Because, obviously, the players are not going to be running around the track. It's going to be cars. So, in order to do that, we need to grab these things called Bear Spawner. So, come in your content browser and type in Bear Spawner. Okay. So, according to the uh, online documentation, it says to add a Bear Spawner. But when you come down in the devices, there's no such thing as a Bear Spawner. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to choose the car that we actually want to race with. And in this case, let's race two sports cars. So the first one, what we'll do is let's face it the correct way, honestly. That'll be the first thing we need to get done. And then we'll set the settings up for it. Make sure it's above the ground, though. And I'll put my snapping on to make sure it's right. Okay, so this would be the first one. And these these spawners need to go right where you think the race will start. So this will be the actual start of the race. But before we move forward, what we need to do is set the options over here. So come over to your options while you have your car spawner on. And we're going to set a whole bunch of different options. So visible during game, we need to have that turned off. Okay. Uh, activating team. There should be one, if you go to advanced, 
it should some, be something that says activating team. And this is going to be team one right here. Okay. Uh, boost enabled. True. I think we want the boost to be enabled. So there's boost enabled. True. Okay, cool. Um, boost uh, region multiplier. So here we go. It's set on one, but we could set it faster to like point 0.1. That's really fast. Oh, I guess you can't. Let's see, 0 0.01 or 0 0.1, no. One, that's fine. Okay. Uh, tire selection. They said that off-road tires um, pick up more traction for racing. So we'll set it like that. Um, other than that, you can come through and play with a lot of these, like give them unlimited boost and all these extra stuff. But anything that we haven't touched, you, you could pretty much leave on default because that's all you need. Um, and then the color and style, you can always you can give like team one a certain color and team two a certain color, or you can make it random. So the next thing we're going to do is copy this over. So Alt and make a number two. The difference here is for the team index, we need this one to be team two. Boom, perfect. Now that we've got that done, um, what we need to do now is we need to add two triggers. So these triggers will be out of the way. So we can put them over here somewhere in the field or wherever this off the track. And we'll pull up the devices here and we'll look for trigger. And you just need a trigger device like this. There you go. We're going to need two of them. But for the first one, what we're going to do is set the trigger delay to three seconds so that um, when they get out of their car they have they only have three seconds before they are returned back to their car so on the trigger delay over here we're gonna set it to three seconds so right here trigger delay three seconds okay then what we're gonna do is visible in game we need this to be false so I'm just gonna type it in here because I don't want to scroll Bow false. Okay. Um and yeah. Let's go ahead and find out which team this is for. Activating team, team one. And then we'll do this slide it over, boop boop, and then just activating team team two. Perfect. So now each team, when they get out of their car, they'll be transported back into their car. Um, and that's after we set up the, well, we're gonna set up some like um, connections between these triggers in a few. But now that you got that in there, last thing or the last thing we need to do for this episode, or well, second the last thing we need to do is add barriers around these cars. So we used the barrier device earlier in the episode to block them from going off the track. But this time, we're going to use the barrier device um, in a different way. We're just going to box it around the car so that it cannot move before the barrier device is, like, you know, ready. Because we want the, the countdown to start and then them to be racing, and then the barrier device will be deactivated, and then they'll be able to move. But in order for this to be right, we need to change a few things about it. So come into the user options. And we need to change enabled on phase to always. And then we need to change the zone shape to a hollow box. There you go. Now make sure that box is not clipping into your car. So if you have to adjust the size, just do that. All right, cool. And then we're going to put the same box over here. So copy it paste it right there and so now none of the players can really move before these boxes are deleted so we've got barrier de barrier devices set up the last thing that we need to add for this episode is called a timed objective device and this is going to help us to start the race so I'm going to put this right over here with the other stuff that's out of the way but let's go ahead and find that here so it'll be a timed objective right here device and we'll put that here since these will be not visible in the game like I don't have to hide them in a building or anything but 
if it was something that was going to be visible in the game, you couldn't turn that off, you could just hide it in the building as a prop. But anyways, for this, we need to set some options. So this is literally, like I said, the countdown for it to start. So for the time, we want to leave it on 10. So we want it to count 10 seconds before the race starts. Um, start when the race starts. Let's see. We need to have this checked. Then um, the time label text. All right. So you know when when games are like racing games are like counting down. They're like get ready, get set, go, or race starting in ten nine. Uh, this is that text right here. So you can really type whatever you want to. And I think the the max is eighty characters. So I'm just gonna type get ready. Okay. And let's see. Do we want this visible during the game? Absolutely not. So down here, invisible during game. Type it in if you can't find it. Turn it off. Bow. All right, cool. Save everything that you've put in here so far because now we've got this set up. And in the next episode, what we're going to do is we are going to um, set up some checkpoints and stuff so that we can make sure that, you know, we know when we're coming around for the second lap, the third lap, and everything like that. But, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed this and you learned something. Um, it's not going to take us too much longer. I think it's only about two more episodes left in this till we have a complete racing game. Most of this racing game was spent for me building the track. So, uh, I hope you guys like my track, by the way. And, and if I can get to the point where I can start putting out these maps... I'm going to put out all the maps that I've made on these on this channel. So again, thanks for rocking with me. I'll holla at y'all in the next one. Peace.